and welcome back to our last actual content video for the Heart of Chemistry, also known as Stoichiometry. The other videos will deal with some sample AP questions so that you can begin to get a taste for the type of questions that have been asked in the past. Now, uh, this next question that we're going to deal with, or the next concept we're going to be dealing with, is using what we've used before, the same idea of the empirical formulas, and we're going to use them to find the formula for a hydrate. Many, many salts come with water very tightly bound to them. They're in the crystal structure. If you heat it extensively, you can actually drive off the water. And we'll likely be doing an experiment on this in the near future. And you can drive off the water, and when you drive off the water, you get what's called an anhydrous salt. So this we could call, since it said it called it the dry sample, we call this a anhydrous without water salt. Now, if you look at this ratio here, I'm going to write it. This is how I like to set these up. It often makes the steps needed very visual. So we've got our salt tightly bonded to some number of waters. And that's our goal in this video, is to find that number of waters that are bonded here. Now, this is a one, and at your level, this is always going to be a whole number. So we'll have one mole of the salt to some whole number of waters. There's a few of them that average out to be a fraction, and we're not going to be looking at those. Uh, so we're going to be looking for a whole number. Now, if we're looking for a mole ratio, that's exactly what we did in our empirical formulas, we need to get to moles. So remember, our first step was to get to moles. Now, we don't want pure moles. We want a mole ratio. And we want that ratio to be a number that's one and larger than one. So we use the same steps, get to moles. So mass to moles, percent to mass to moles, however it takes, get to moles, divide by the smallest. Now in this case, we will never divide by whole. So I'll often say mass to moles or percent to mass. It's not going to be a combustion type problem. So percent to mass, mass to moles, and before it was divide by the smallest, multiply to the whole. We've got kind of this dud statement of percent to mass, mass to moles, divide by the salt. So that's what we'll be doing every time on these. But the concept is identical. So if you follow the steps of an empirical formula, it will work. Now in this case, and I think if we write it this way, this is how I like to do it because I think the math comes out very obvious. This is 16. 0.59 grams here. Then they heated it off, uh, they heated it up and drove off the water and came up with a dry sample of 10.59. Now, how do they know it's dry? Well, experimentally, we know it's dry because what is done is you dry it, you put it in an evaporating dish, typically. Uh, you could put it in a crucible, certainly, with a lid if you're worried about some splashing, but there's not really liquid in this. Uh, so crucible, evaporating dish, you dry it, you cool it, and you weigh it. And then you repeat the cycle. Dry, cool, weigh, dry, cool, weigh, until you reach a constant mass. So you're going to heat it until you reach a constant mass. Sometimes it even will bump a teeny bit at the end, and then you know you're done. So that's how the experiment was done, how we knew that this was truly the dry salt. Now, I think when you lay it out with parentheses like this, it makes it very clear that your water is going to be 16.59 minus 10.59, which gives me uh, six grams of water. So if you, I lay it out, I bracket it with the information that's given, and I think that it really makes the numbers jump out at you. Now, we've done that. We didn't need to do percent to mass because we were given mass, uh, but we figured out all the masses. Now we need to go mass to moles. And we're not dealing with elements anymore. We're dealing with, in this case, a formula unit of a salt. 
So we have 10.59 grams of sodium S2O3 thiosulfate. And not of each individual element. We're going to do it as the whole component. And mass to moles use molar mass. So if you added those up, you'd get 158.12. And now remember, don't round these to any great extent, or it really can throw your values off. So I get this many moles. I'm going to do the same thing with water. I have 6.00 grams of water. And I'm going to multiply it by the mole ratio of water, one mole. And many of you are starting to memorize water now because we come across that so frequently. And if I make a mistakes in math, you know you're supposed to tell me that. Moles of water. So percent to mass, mass to moles. If you've done it right, the smallest should be the salt because the ones we'll deal with will always have a one there to some number bigger than one for water. And yes, indeed, that, that is our case here. So if I divide my salt by the salt, I'm gonna get one, but I have to divide the water by that as well. And I get 0 0.06697, and if I divide that out, I get a five. So what that tells me is that my formula is Na2S2O3 dot 5H2O. And so we would call that sodium thiosulfate. You just name the salt. So, and I want you to know how to name these. That would be part of your test. That would be a question on your test is to ask you to name this. So you're given the salt, so fortunately you didn't have to worry about not knowing the thiosulfate polyatomic. You did not need to know that. 5, to tell us 5, we use the prefix penta, just like what we would use if we were writing names for our covalence. So it's penta. Now, when you're thirsty, you need to hydrate. When you become dehydrated, whoops, there's my D, missed my D. When you become dehydrated, you need to hydrate. So add water is a hydration process. So sodium thiosulfate penta hydrate. Now, next few videos, I'm not sure how many it's going to take, we'll walk through at least two and maybe three AP questions relating to the heart of chemistry.